Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, definitely share the video. Got a good one for you today. Bringing a guest on that spent a lot of time in USPs around some dangerous people. He put in some work, he had a lot of things going on while he was in there, but he's free now. So I'll let him introduce himself, tell the people where you're from, how you ended up in prison. Just talk a little bit about you, bro. What's going on? My name's Joe. Delaware, uh, Claymont, Delaware. Nobody really knows of anything about Delaware. So uh, I got locked up for bank robbery. I had two bank robberies and two Hobbs Act robberies. Got 84 months, did about six and some change on it. Um, you know, they sent me, I had, a, I had a, a parole detainer out of Pennsylvania. So it jacked my points up to high custody. So they sent me to uh, USP Canaan in Pennsylvania, which is the closest USP at the time. So, yeah, I started off straight in the USP. None of the, no medium or nothing like that, like I thought I was going to, but it is what it is. Joe, what year did you go into Canaan? Uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah, I was, in, I was in FDC Philly for about a year, waiting on court and all that. Let me ask you this. When you were in Canaan, were you there when them AC dudes hit the AV dude in the kitchen? Yes. 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 Yeah. Psycho and Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Act, yeah. Yeah. I definitely was there for that. You were over I was there. In the chow, I was in the chow hall when that happened. Actually, when they hit Mark. Yeah, they hit Mark. Yep. Yeah. What yeah. happened with that, man? Uh, man, it was just something, you know, they, they said it came down from the Duke ghost or whatever. Something happened at another spot. You know, that's how it is in the USP. You got to worry about stuff that happens in other prisons. It ain't even... You know what I mean? This dude's just sitting in the chow hall eating his pizza, you know, and then two kitchen workers walk up and just slice his face up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he had no idea it was coming because they were all cool the day before. And then the next but, day he's in there getting cut. Was he trying to – I heard he was trying to get underneath the table, man, to yeah, stop yeah, him from he cutting was. him. It actually caused a whole bunch of stuff between independents too because everybody was mad that nobody knew it was happening and then nobody jumped in to help him. But, you know what I mean? It was in the middle of main line. Like, main, you know what I mean? Every staff member in the building plus some was right there when it happened. So it was over in two seconds. Like, I did a I did a video on Aaron Pike and Greg Patterson, right? And after I did that video, you seen it. And you I told seen me, it last night for the first time. You told me that you were Greg Selly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg, man. Greg's a good dude, man. You know, he has his vices like everybody else does, but... He's a good dude. I looked it up on the inmate locator. It said he's getting out in 2030. So, yeah, he's he's in Thompson right now. He's at the SMU. So, he done messed up again. I took a shot for him, actually, when he got caught uh, with a batch of liquor. You know what I mean? He just got out of the SMU, so I didn't want him to go back. You know what I mean? I was short. You know, I'd already lost all my good time for the year, so I just took the shot for him. He, um... Same thing, man, when I was at USP Lee with him, man. He was always making wine and had his vices. <laughs> that dude was yeah, a good dude though. You ever man. see him you ever see him good. you ever see him fight it or anything? Yeah, uh one of the times I put in work, yeah, he was he was with me. So I, I actually did some time in the shoe with him too. Let's talk about that. Putting in work. Tell the people what putting in work is. Putting in work is basically cleaning the car up. Um you know, somebody comes from another spot and your number's up. I had just came in. I wasn't in the in the system that long the first time I put work in. I just volunteered to get it out the way. Um, basically, it's just a line. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to sit around and watch TV and, you know, and enjoy, you know, being locked up there. You know, in order to walk the yard, you got to, you got to, you know, take your turn. But it didn't work. Like, you know, somebody comes messed up. They checked in at another spot or something like that. Somebody's got to knock them off the line. Because we, we put hands on people, the white car anyway. We don't tell them that you got to go up. You, we don't walk you to the lieutenant office or nothing like that. I mean, whether you agree with it or not, it is what it is. Like, it's just one of them things. So putting your hands on someone. I want people to understand that when you say putting in work, man, I mean, you're just... Really, you're just doing whatever you got to do, stabbing the dude, hitting him with a lock, beating yeah, him up, kicking yeah, him. Yeah. When when do you yeah, stop? Well, when do you stop punching you, him? You, you don't stop till you get sprayed. And yeah, that's that's the that's the hard part about it. Because sometimes the cops, 
don't come right away. So you got to keep going until they do come. And I, I, I've got sprayed every time. Every time I put in work, I got sprayed. It's not fun. And sometimes it's on somebody you don't want to do it on, but it's either do the work or be the work. And it's just, yeah, I didn't agree with it the first time I put in work, but he was wrong. So why'd you have to put in work on the do? Uh, he was put. He was paying white dudes to hit other uh, white dudes on personal stuff. Um, he had he had a history of doing it. He was uh, paying people in heroin to do basically his his personal business. He had some dude hit in the chow hall for no reason other than he owed him money and you know something like that. You're supposed to do it yourself. So that was his second time doing it. So the yard rep at the time just wanted him to go. I wanted to get my work out the way because I just, I mean, I, I just think it's better to do it earlier rather than get established and then have to go to the shoe for 60 days or whatever. My, my first one was 63 days. So you're in Canaan, the, the right. yard, the yard rep. Was it Adam? Was Adam over there with you? No, the yard rep at the time was a dude from Alabama named Puckett. And then, uh, a dude from Minnesota named Redbeard and, and then Jamie Lee, they kind of split the yard. After yeah. Puckett left, I don't know if you know either one of them. <clears throat> I know who Redbeard is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Redbeard and Jamie Lee had the yard. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So you're in Kane, and that's your first prison. Do you stay there your whole time? No, no. I, I put in work uh, three times there, and SIS just got fed up with us when we hit the we hit the red side yard rep, uh, a dude named Jesse from Oregon. That was a whole mess. He was causing ruckus with the gang members solely just because they were gang members so he had to go because he was causing all kinds of crashes and this was around the time that the the white boys sold the tv over in f1 or f2 i can't remember which unit but they sold the tv so they they were just sick of the white boys at the time sis was so they just shipped probably about 12 of us out of there they sold the tv yeah they sold the tv man but judge uh, they had two tvs in that unit and uh, one of the units, actually, we didn't even have a TV. And uh, instead of, you know, trading out a TV to give to the white dudes over another unit, they decided that they were going to sell. Well, not all of them. About half of the white dudes over there, they said they woke up one morning and the Pisces were watching the TV. And they said that uh, Redbeard had sold the TV before he left. So that caused six white dudes to get hit. It, yeah, it was 12. It was in the chow hall. It was 12 white dudes hit six white dudes. And at the same time, that earlier that day, I had hit, we, me and my celly hit uh, the yard rep on that side. So everybody that got locked up that day in the shoe, they just transferred everybody. When you hit them, did you was, stab them or just beat them up? No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I just beat them up. I, I only had seven years. I wasn't, I wasn't putting myself in a situation to stab nobody. You know, they're not going to hand you a knife and tell you you have to stab anybody. I mean, if they did, then they'd have to stab me because I'm not doing it. But that's, you know, that's for gang members trying to earn their patch and stuff like that. Yeah. So gang members trying to earn their patch. A lot of times they got to stab someone. They got to put in that work, right? Right. Do you remember who, do you remember who my celly was? Aaron Pike? Did you know? And you not, know? I've, I've heard him just because of Greg, but I didn't know who he was. Like, you know what I mean? I knew the name only because of Greg. I want to talk about them selling the TV so everybody knows. Usually in the USP, the whites have a TV, the blacks have a TV, the Hispanics have a TV, there's a sports TV, there's a movie TV. And these white dudes got two TVs and they decide to sell one of the TVs. How hard is it to get a TV? Oh, man, it's impossible, man. Like, All right, perfect example. My last spot that I was at, USP Beaumont, they, we came off the bus. All right, it was COVID and we came off the bus and... We go to a quarantine unit, three buses, 120 people in a unit, packed every single cell. And, you know, that's our holdover unit until they, you know, they classify us and all that and send us to our units. Well, apparently that was going to be our unit. So they took three buses right off the bat, right off the bus and put us all in the same unit. You know, no idea of whose TVs or whose, whose cells or whose, whose tables or nothing. You guys just figure it out. And the TV issue came up. We got our TV, 
you know, because uh, we, me and my celly were orderly, so we established our TVs. The Serenios established their TVs. Uh, some of the blacks, they established their TVs, but, you know, they got so many different cars. Well, they got to fighting over a TV between the Tongo Blast and, uh, yeah, it was a Tongo Blast dude and a black dude from Florida. And, yeah, they, they basically got into it over the TV. They kept, you know, nitpicking about whose TV it was. And uh, they come out one morning, and the Tongo Blast changed the TV. And the dude in the uh, cell, the black dude, he said, look, you know what I mean, that's our TV. And the Tongo Blast dude said, fuck you, that's our TV. Well, next thing you know, next thing you know, the um, medical deuces go. They hit the deuces for medical. Black dude's in the uh, cell having a seizure. And as soon as they popped that door, that black dude was faking a seizure. He ran out, and he butchered that Tongo Blast dude over the TV. Like, it's... It's that serious to them, like, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's serious. So he they ran out. Himself. He ran out and stabbed the dude. He ran. I mean, he butchered him, man. Was the I tell you, he butchered. Him. He didn't kill him, but he might as well. Though. Was the Tango Blast dude fighting back? He was trying to, but none of his. Everybody was so shocked that it happened like that. It was another one that was over before it could get, you know, before it could get escalated. Because you know, the Tango Blast dude. They run with the Serenios and all them. And luckily, we were only out five cells at a, at a time for COVID. I was in the cell when it happened, but I had a direct view of it. But it, it's just little things like that that you just never know, man. Them doors pop. Anything can happen. Do you think That's, that seeing things like that, do you think it affected you mentally? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, I mean, I yeah, I think about it all the time. It's just... Yeah, it affects me out here. Like, you know, if I hear loud, if I hear keys or something like that, I immediately get on point. Like, you know, I hear keys run, like somebody drops keys. I think it's the COs running. Any kind of loud noises, people walk up too close behind you. You know, if you're sitting down at a table eating and somebody out of nowhere just walks up on the table, like it, you know, it, it's just, it's definitely some PTSD there. What's one of the craziest things you've seen at Beaumont? At Beaumont, not too much at Beaumont. I was only there a few months. That was the craziest thing I've seen at Beaumont. Uh, we were only there a few months because of COVID. We were locked down, and then I got the halfway house. But uh, the craziest thing that I've seen was when they put a paisa on the yard at McCreary. And uh, the, uh, the Aztecas, the Barrios Aztecas, they were out on the yard, and the paisa showed up. It wasn't the most violent thing I've seen, but it was just crazy how it happened. They all took out their padlocks and laundry loops. I'm thinking they're about to beat this dude with a, you know what I mean, with a lock. Well, they chained all their padlocks together and they locked the gate. So when the cops ran up, you know, there was a delay. And yeah, yeah they, they almost killed him too. But the tower got, the tower shot one of the dudes with the rubber bullets and then hit him with the concussion grenades. But just how they, you know, they planned it together and locked that gate on the cops. I mean, the cops had the keys, but when they're running up, they're not thinking that right away. So it gave them a couple extra seconds to, for them to get the key and open the lock. But, yeah, I mean, Mark, when Mark got hit, that was that was pretty bad, too, just the way how fast it was. Um, when I hit the Chomo, I hit a Chomo at uh, McCreary, and that was pretty bad. They had the light flight them out of there. But I wasn't even supposed to do that. Like, that was spur of the moment. They were checking his paperwork, and they found out that he was bad. They pacered him. They found out that Greg pacered him and um, found out he was bad. They were going to get him on the next move. There was an arm prospect there at the time that was going to get him on the next move. They talked to him in the unit next door through sign language, and um, they were going to get him on the next move. Well, I was standing next to him at the office when he decided to go check in. And, you know what I mean, if I'd have let him check in, that would have been me. I'd have been getting hit. So, and he was a little fast dude, too. So, I, I had a lock on me. I always carried a lock. I didn't really like carrying knives. I just carried a lock for protection because I know I'm not just going to go stab somebody. If I, if I do anything, it's going to be in defense. But I had a lock in, on a laundry loop, and he was right there in the office, and he took off running. So, I just swung the lock and got him. He fell in the office. And then my celly ran over with me. And, you know, like you said, you can't stop until they spray you. Well, these cops wanted him hit, so they weren't spraying me. So we just had to keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them. And finally, they sprayed us. 
And it was just, yeah, it was just one of them things. Where was he from? He was his, he was from actually I think he got killed in Thompson. Uh, he was from Michigan, I think. Yeah, he's from Michigan. They killed I him. I googled. They they killed. He got killed at Thompson. He ended up dead at Thompson. I saw the news on the. I saw. I typed his name in, and they said they found him in the uh, cell, unresponsive at Thompson. So I, I'm assuming he was maybe in the root program or something like that. Because you know, if you're in the SMU, ain't nobody else getting at you except for your cellie, but. But, uh, yeah, they said they found him unresponsive, and the way they categorized it was like, you know what I mean, he was like the second or third inmate killed there. So I haven't heard nothing about it. But, yeah, he was from Michigan. He, he was a vicious one, too. Like his, his case was pretty bad. Took some kids across state lines back in, like, 96. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. What was his name? But, yeah. uh, Boyd Weekly. Boyd Weekly? Yeah, Weekly. W-E-E-K-L-E-Y. Yeah, he was a bad one, man. Like he, he really deserved what he was supposed to have coming. How much and time did he get? Uh, life, I believe. Yeah, because it was ninety six. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, I think he had life. That's why he was in a pen. Why would he try his hand, man, at a penitentiary? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know why he. I don't know why a lot of them dudes walk out on that yard. Like you're playing with fire because you're going to get found out. It may take time. I've seen dudes been on the yard for a couple years and. They get found out, and when it comes to being a child molester and stuff like that, man, they don't they, they don't take that they, they they take that serious in the pen. It's like, you know, all the fighting we must do amongst ourselves. But when a chomo comes, it's a different story. Like you're gonna die. They're gonna try to kill you. But, was was he yeah. screaming? Was he yelling when you guys were hitting him, or what? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was screaming, and the cops they wanted it to happen. You know, they were, they, all they were doing is they had their spray can up for the camera because we were in the office, but they had it up to where they had the, the, the can in their hand, and all they were doing was saying, stop fighting, like real low, just so they could say that they were telling us to stop fighting. And I stopped hitting them with the lock because I really didn't want to kill them. I want, you know what I mean? It was spur of the moment, but I didn't want to leave out of there with, you know what I mean? With one of your stories you were talking about, you go in and you never come out. I, I didn't want to be that dude. Have you I was seen that? Mad that it happened the way that it did, but have you seen that happen? Have you seen dudes go in there with a little bit of time and end up in yeah. a position where they're never getting out? Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen I've seen it when uh, when one of my, my Serenio homies uh, they killed somebody at uh, Canaan when I first first got there on the yard, and he was like, I think he was back on a violation. Yeah, he was on a violation, and yeah, as far as I know, he wasn't coming home. I mean, they killed somebody, so I'm assuming. I don't know exactly what happened to them, but they killed somebody out on the yard. Have you seen? Have you seen other yeah. sex offenders try their hand at Canaan or out I'm there sorry. on McCrary? What was that? Have you seen other sex offenders try their hands at McCrary oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, Canaan? Yeah, I've seen. I've seen uh, a Latin King. Uh, Latin King ended up being a well. He wasn't a sex offender. He ended up being a gunner. He uh, he gun. He was he was a gunner that got a shot in. Uh, in the smooth program, he caught a gun and shot in the smooth program, and when he came to came and they killed him. But see, the thing is, if you look up the the, the death numbers in these prisons, you you'll see that they're so low because they only classify it as somebody getting killed if they die on the yard. If they die at the hospital or in the ambulance, it doesn't count. So when you see these numbers, they're actually a lot lower than they really are. You think yeah, federal prison is a dangerous and violent place? I'm, I'm sorry, was I'm just like all this noise going on back here? Do you think federal prison is a dangerous and violent place? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, as far as the USPs go, because everybody goes, "Oh, you did times in the feds. That must have been sweet." Absolutely not. There was nothing sweet about the USPs. Because I mean, if you're not out and there's not crazy stuff going on, you're locked. You're you're locked down. All the time you're locked down. So one way or another, it's mental. Like if it's not stuff you've seen, it's the mental of being locked in for no reason. Something could kick off in Victorville in California and lock all the USPs down. And you'll be down for six weeks sometimes and for no reason. So Joe, you you end up Canaan's your first prison. When you're pulling in there, what are you thinking in your mind? Because now you're going to a USP. I'm sure you heard the stories. What were you thinking? I was just thinking, man, I just need to make this out of this, make it out of here alive and with no extra time. 
Were you nervous? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You'd be anybody would be lying if they said they weren't showing up to a USP for the first time. You hear all the horror stories when you're in, you know, when you're in pretrial. So when you're in pretrial or when you're on the bus, you don't know where you're going yet. Are you thinking in your mind, like, man, I hope I'm going to an FCI? I thought I was going to FCI Spooky. That's where I thought I was going because of the date that I was leaving and everything. I, I read the Busted by the Feds book, all that. I, I just knew I was going to a medium, but nope. And Canaan's nope. a hell of a place to pull up to. They got a history after the cop was killed over there. How were the cops yeah. over there towards the prisoners, man? Oh, man. They, 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 they held it on the white dudes. You know what I mean? Like they said, because it happened on the unit that I went to, C1. It happened there. So when we went there, they got the little spot in the unit marked off where you can't walk. Um, they say after it happened, they tore all the white dudes' cells apart and all that and just harassed the white dudes because they said that they were supposed to jump in and help the top because he was white. But, you know, that's not how it goes. But, yeah, they won't let it go there. Uh, they wear them Eric J. Williams sweatshirts all the time. And anybody even, like, in the shoe, people will start yelling out just to antagonize the cops. They'll start yelling his name out and stuff like that. Yeah, they're they're real sensitive when it comes to that. But yeah, you if you get caught making hooch there, if you go you make liquor there, you're gonna sit in the shoe for ninety days just because that's what it was all over was over liquor. So and, and people are still trying, right? Oh yeah, they're still trying, but yeah, Canaan, man, that place right there. Is, when it came to alcohol, it was very rare that you saw alcohol there. I went through there in transit, man, not too long ago, right? Um, right. probably about two and a half years ago. And the cops were just viciously nasty, man. The oh, yeah, they're bad. Yeah, they're the worst cops. Everybody told me Hazleton's cops were the worst. No, Canaan's cops got uh, Hazleton's cops hands down. They're way worse. Do you think they're nasty because of the shit that happened? I think it's a combination of they're nasty and they're just, I, it, it sounds crazy, but they're all, you know, they're, it's all white cops there. And when you get a bunch of white cops, they're assholes. Like, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but Beaumont, the cops were cool as hell. They were all black. But I don't know what, what the, you know, why that is, but they're all military at Canaan. They're all, like, military, and they just got a chip on their shoulder. They are, they feel like their hands, are they putting their hands on people over there? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, especially back in the shoe, man. In the shoe, man, they're putting, yeah, they're putting their hands on people left and right. They'll pop, they'll, they'll, they'll slide the door on you, and they ain't supposed to do that. They'll open that door and go in there, and they'll yell, stop fighting. That's their favorite thing. They'll stand at the door, and if you're mouthing off to them and you get under their skin, they'll yell, stop fighting, and they'll hit the deuces, and they'll just run in there on you and beat the shit out of you, spray you, and, and then put you in the chair. And you're not even fighting. And you're not even fighting. Are they putting people in the chair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially at Hazleton. They're really putting people in the chair. Damn. I didn't actually... know... What's up? I didn't know they were doing that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got the chair. Beaumont, they were using it down there, too. So they're Yo, using... Yeah. yeah, they love that chair. They, I mean, they've gotten in trouble over it, but we're leaving them in there too long. I know uh, one of the nurses, or not the nurses, the psych lady got fired down at Beaumont for letting them do it for too long. But yeah, they definitely use that little chair. So, how long you been free? Four months, almost four months exactly. How did it feel to walk out of that prison? Man, it felt good to walk out of prison, man. But I ain't gonna lie, man. They put me on a Greyhound bus down in Texas. They sent all my property home, so I left out wearing khakis and bus shoes. And then it took me three days to get home on the Greyhound bus. They turned me around like three different times. But no, it was great to be home, but. I'd have rather took the damn prison transport home, as crazy as that sounds. But no, it, it's lovely to be free, man. It's a, it's a complete change. I'm in the halfway house right now. I'm not even all the way home yet, but I will be in the next week. Do you feel like people on that bus were looking at you like, man, you, you they knew you just got out of prison? Man, I, I, I feel like that all the time. You know, you get all these tattoos in there while you're locked up and you don't even think about, you know, what it's going to be like when you get out. But yeah. Yeah, I, I still do. I always feel like people look at me and know. I mean, whether they do or not, it's just in my head. Like, I just feel like, you know, everybody can just mark me right away as a, as an inmate or somebody that just got out. But I, I, I get counseling and stuff like that for PTSD and all that. So, you know, once a week I see somebody. Uh, it's BOP funded. So, 
Yeah, are, it definitely it definitely leaves a mark on you mentally. Are you committed to never going back? Absolutely. Yeah, man, heroin's real big out here where I'm at. Or I should say fentanyl. And it's what it's doing to people out here now, eating their skin the way it is. Just I, I don't have another bit in me, man. I've done state time, county time, federal time now. I'm just done with it. I got a good girl who held me down the whole time I was locked up. You know, she she put up with a lot with me. But, yeah, she she's looking out. You know, my family, I'm getting my family support back right slowly but surely. People are actually starting to trust in me again. Yeah, How's that feel? Good. How's that feel, man? It feels good, man. Like, you know, because a lot of people just give up on you. But uh, everybody's starting to slowly turn around. They see that I'm trying. You know, I got a, I got a really good job thanks to the halfway house. Um, you know, I work full time during the week. Uh, I see my girl on the weekend. Oh, I just, I just stay out of the way, man. I, I, I cut off all the old negative influences and I just, just try to keep it, you know, just keep it all the way legit. I'm happy for you. For real, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. People don't know what you've seen and what you've experienced. You know, they can listen to the stories all they want, but until right. you put them shoes on and you dance that dance, no one right. really knows, bro. Yeah. Nobody knows, man. It, everybody's just one slip up away from ending up in a USP. I mean, it, it's bad. It's, it's bad when you got to think about it like that, but I don't know, man. I just, I don't want, I don't wish that on my worst enemy right there. Man. And then all the people that are still in there, I feel bad for them. You know, I try to help people out as much as I can just now getting out. That's why when I saw your channel and saw what you were about, I, I really like, I like what you're doing. Like, you know what I mean? Cause people in there, they don't got. They can't do nothing. You're locked down half the time, so you can't even make a legal call. You can't. You know, I myself, I went through the same situation where all I needed was a a, a legal call or something like that, or somebody to go down to the courthouse and get this stuff. And if I didn't get somebody to do that for me, I'd still be in a USP. I wouldn't have got my detainer taken care of to be able to be in halfway house. And, you see this, Joe? Sometimes we're all we got, man, and. You know, yeah. this is, you know, there's a lot of prison channels out there and all that. But for real, man, we're really getting it out there. We're letting people know this is what's really going on. This is what the cops are doing. They're standing at the door saying, stop fighting. And there is no fight. They're coming in there beating the shit out of you. We're telling yep. people what it's like to go to bed hungry at night. You know, we, yep. we, we are exposing some of this stuff, man. And it's important yep. that we do. It's about time that we do because, you know, there was really no scrutiny on federal prison and the murders and all the things that were happening until Whitey Bulger was murdered. When he oh, was yeah. murdered, he's a high yep. name, a high profile guy. Yep. Now all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, people are getting killed in federal prison." What? Yeah, yeah. They changed. They changed up a lot after that happened. I, I came to Hazelton right after that happened, and yeah, they they definitely fired a lot of cops. Yeah, they, he should have never walked that yard. But man, what they're doing to people's wrong, man. You know, when 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 the the courts decided that federal inmates should get the stimulus checks, you know, if they file the the date. You know, file it by a certain date. They waited till that date to come around and, and give you the paperwork. You know, it, it was just wrong. Like they just the way they do the mail there. So if you guys got anybody that's locked up, man, even if you don't got the time, just write them, man. Just write them, tell them you love them, because they they look forward to that stuff, man. Mail call, you know, it, it nobody likes to write mail these days, but man, just take the time out, man. You don't have to send them money if you don't got it. Just write them a letter. It costs 55 cents, man. Just let them know that you're still thinking about them. It'll make their day. Like That's you may the cause same. them, you may stop them from doing something stupid later on. No doubt. Hey, before we close the show, right. I'm going to ask you this. And, and you know, you, like I said, you're committed to changing your life, man. And I hope you stay on that path, but what message would you have for your younger self or, you know, the kids or even dudes, man, that are 27, 28 that are on the wrong path or women, man. What is your message to them? My message is, man, stop while you can, man. Before you, you get that addiction or whatever it is that, that leads you down that path, you know, just don't do not do it, man. It's not worth it. You get high or whatever it is you're doing, just don't do it because, you know, it's fun at the time. But, man, you, you make that, that mistake and you end up in prison, man, like, it don't matter what kind of prison you're, in, you're just stopping your life right there and you may never get it back. So I, I just, if I could go back, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't pick up the drugs. I wouldn't, I'd go to school, stay in school and just do the right thing. I don't really know what else to say. I don't 
have a like a, a way of wording it, but just just do just do what you do what's right. You don't want to end up in there, man. Well, listen, Joe, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, you know, sharing your experiences and reliving some of the stuff that you've been through. I'm going to close the show and just tell everybody, man, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. And definitely think about it. Think about the stuff that Joe said today, because it's important, man. Think about the things that he's seen, that he experienced. And with that, I'm going to close the show, Joe, with respect, blood on the razor wire TV. Until tomorrow, we're out. Thank you.